this part's a little tricky getting your ratchet in here on the bolt and it's a half inch bolt so you know, these are pretty tight it slips off easy because you got oil all over it now to get the other one out turn your crankshaft so it's down like this and you can get to the other one A lot of these engines, like I was talking about the thing that locks them, if they don't have it, you'll hear it sound like a rod knocking, which is, that's what it is. But the reason, because these bolts start working loose. They don't have nothing to do with how much oil you put in or anything. They just start working loose. There's the two rod bolts out. Now on some brigs, one is shorter than the other one. The torque specs are different on them. They're a lot easier to torque these. I got these out. Now we're going to pop the end cap off. I might have to get a screwdriver. I just gently tapped it with the screwdriver and it came off. Now you can check your bearing for wear. This is pretty good. It's a few light score marks. The rest of the rod should look like that too. So I'm going to get the crankshaft out of the way. I'll put the camera back on the tripod and I'll show you how to get the piston and rod out. Now what you gotta do, get a hold of the rod here, press up on it, you'll see your piston come out. Sometimes they're harder to do, get your rings out. Now be careful that the rod don't hit the cylinder wall and cause a scratch. Now here's the piston. This seems like it's in pretty good shape. It's a couple of light score marks on it. The general rule of thumb is uh, if you run your finger now over and you can feel them and they're pretty deep and the piston should be replaced the same for a cylinder if you can feel them with your finger now uh, it should be bored out now this one I'll show you here in a second this is a pretty smooth bore here okay here's a look inside the cylinder bore As you can see there's just a couple little tiny scratches I can't even feel them with my finger now so I'm going to hunt it out and it'll be good to go. Here's a look at the valves. I can't really tell much yet. Uh, I hope the valve guides are good because I don't have any bushings. Uh, I'll probably just go with it like it is. Turn the light off here. Uh, okay, now what we're going to do, I got to pull the crankshaft out and you don't have to pull the crankshaft out to rebuild an engine. I'm just doing it because I'm going to clean all this sludge out really good. And like I said, it's going to be honed out, so I don't want no metal particles inside of it. So. This is probably the easiest part of the whole project. Just grab a hold of it and pull it out. And I got a wall all over me. And I should take my own advice and drain the hole out better. Okay, here's the crankshaft. It's in real good shape. No scores at all on the journal. This gear is removable. You can see here. Yeah, this crankshaft is in real good shape. I'm always glad to see one in good shape. Okay, here's a closer look at the crankshaft. This is a good journal here. Nothing wrong with this one at all. Here's another view of your camshaft. Closer view of it. Lobes look pretty good on it. Closer view of all the sludge here. Okay, I just got through cleaning up the block. I took a wire brush from the drill all the way around here. Got all the old gasket off. Cleaned up this. I decided to leave this one on here, the valve cover gasket, because it's actually good. No reason not to reuse it. If it leaks, I'll put another one on it. I cleaned off this. And I cleaned off the top of the head good enough. I wish I had a milling machine so I could surface all this, but it'll be alright for now. Uh, I wire brushed all this just to make it look a little bit better. And also, the crankcase cover here, I got it all cleaned up. Uh, I'll probably put a new oil seal in this, show you, all, show you all how to do that. So,
Alrighty, got both valves out now. Sorry I didn't show you. I'll try to explain how you do it. Okay, once you have your valve inside here, the spring rests up against the top of this, uh, I call it the valve spring box, I guess you could call it. Uh, okay, let me show you how the setup is on the actual valve. Okay, what you want to do, you want to get your compressor and compress, get it up on this and compress the whole spring. Then this will slide off. It'll kind of like snap, pop off. You got these two little keepers that go on the valve. Oops, on the valve stem. See, they got a little tiny groove inside. It lines up with the groove on the valve stem. And you get both of them in there, and that's what holds the uh, retainer on. Alrighty, this is the intake valve here. It's in the block, the same as the exhaust valve, and the spring rests up against the top of that. But the retainer clip's completely different. You'll see you compress the spring and this will just slide out like this. Much simpler. See how the spring holds on there like that? And also notice this valve is burnt. Uh, try to get it in focus here. Let me find that spot. Looks like to me it's burnt right through here. There's like a little tiny crack in the valve right here. The valve seat is fine, so I got a new valve here. Well, it's not new, it's out of another engine. If I'll put it in there, then reseat it, and it should be fine. Uh, we'll check the valve guide play here in a minute. Okay, I got the valve sitting in here. This is the original exhaust valve. And this is my new, old intake valve I'm putting in here. It's good. And this is how I check valve guide play. Get it pretty close to it's closed. And just wiggle it. See, it's just barely moving. I'm not that worried about it. If it's much worse than this, it has to have new valve guide bushings put in. And that's getting into a little more work. I actually did a video a while back on lapping valves. I thought I'd do to run through it again just to briefly. I'm just going to do one valve on camera. The process is the same for both valves. Okay, I'm just going to get a little dab of this stuff here. Valve grinding compound. And I got a habit of using way too much. Get a little bit there. And it's best to put just a little bit more around the face of the valve here. Okay, then we're going to drop it back in there and get your valve lapping tool. And run it back and forth like you're trying to start a campfire. That's it. Keeping pressure down on it too. And if you get a little bit of dirt on there, these things don't want to stick. Turn a little bit like that and turn it. Just keep doing that. Do it for, I don't know, maybe 20 seconds or so. You can go by the sound of it too to a certain extent. Whenever you want to check it, pull it out. You're probably going to need more than that. But wipe off the stuff. Without the grinding compound on here. Take a look at it. It's still got a few pitted places here and there on it. So you just keep doing that until everything looks... Nice and smooth. See there's a couple pitted places on the actual valve seat itself here. So just keep doing it until you feel comfortable with it and, and it should be good to go. I'm going to finish this off camera. If you want to see more about this, look at one of my other videos on valve lapping or reseating valves. Okay, now I'll get ready to take the old piston rings off of it. I'm leaving the connecting rod on, but this one's still good. As you can see the bearing's still good here. Uh, but if you're going to take it off, what you do, see that snap ring, oops, sorry, you just get a pair of needle nose down in here, and kind of just twist it and snap it out. I'll show you in another video sometime, if there's any interest in that. Okay, and also note, I just got through wire brushing the top of the piston, to get all the carbon built up off of it. Okay, I got the piston here, now we're going to take the rings off. That's the way I do it. I just kind of 
peel them off like it. I'm sorry I'm off camera there. It's kind of kind of hard to do this and wash myself. If you know your old rings are bad, you can just break them off if you want. There's the middle compression the rings are off. It's best to clean out the ring grooves on the piston. Now you can either use a screwdriver like this and just try to get all the carbon build up out, or you could take one of your old rings, break it in half, and go around and scrape it all out. And the best method is to get a piston ring groove cleaner. It goes around here and cleans it out. And now we're going to get ready to put the new piston rings on. If you look at them, I don't know if you, if you can see them or not, but they got a, they're shaped like this. And they got like a notch cut out of them. The notch goes towards the bottom of the piston. And this is the middle ring and the top ring is the same. Your oil ring is different like this. And you got this thing here that goes around on your oil ring first. Now it's pretty much the same as taking them off. You're just doing it backwards. And be careful not to break them. You just start peeling them on. Just take your time. You don't want to break your new rings. Okay, now it's in the first groove. Go ahead and walk it over to the second one here. Okay, I got the middle ring on. This one goes on the exact same way as the middle ring. You just start walking it on. It's best to use a piston ring expander. I don't have one. You just gotta be careful with it and take your time. Okay, there's your top two rings on. Now, your oil ring. Well, first, you need to put this on. I almost forgot. This helps control the oil going through the cylinder wall. Put it in the slot like this. Make sure it's in all the way around. And you just walk it back on there, the same as the other one. Okay, after I get this one here, you want to make sure one ring gap is here, one's here, and one's here. This way they're not all lined up. That allows for your blow-by to pass by or oil to pass into the combustion chamber, which you don't want. And this also increases compression doing this. So that's the way you're, actually the correct way you do it. Okay, now we'll get ready to put some STP on it. That's what I always use. You can just use motor oil, STP, anything like that. But don't use grease or something like that. Alright, now we're going to put the crankshaft in. I got a little cap full of STP. As you can see, stuff's pretty thick. Just use a little paintbrush like this and brush a little bit on the crankshaft bearings. It don't take much. Uh, although more is better than not enough. I mean, too much is better than not enough. Okay, we'll put some more on the put a little dab back here in the bearing just to make sure that's all right. I'm not replacing the oil seal on the flywheel side of the engine. Uh, they hardly ever leak anyway, so there's really no point in it. A little bit in here, in here like that, and you'll set it in there. Your timing gear comes off sometimes. You set it in here. Now you want to make sure your dog bone lines up. Just like that. Now your crankshaft's good to go. You might want to spin it a little bit. Make sure you're, nothing's in a bind or anything. It's also a good time to see how the counterweights work. How they offset the weight from the piston and rod. Okay, let me get the piston ring compressor. We'll drop the piston in and hook up the rod.